Hickok 45 with an anniversary for you. Isn't this pretty? Yeah, some people wouldn't think so. They think it's a piece of junk, but it is definitely not a piece of junk, is it? It is a M1 carbine, standard products. Made a bunch of them for World War II, as did several companies, right? About nine or 10 companies made six million of these things and uh, fairly quickly. And this, it had interchangeable parts. Go to the Inland M1 carbine video we did uh, more recently, three, four years ago, maybe. I'll link to it. How's that? I'll help you out a little bit in the description and maybe a pinned comment. I go more into the history and brought some books out and uh, went uh, way deeper even than I normally do, I think, on these sorts of things. So I'll link to that one. But this is an anniversary video. This was uh, my first real M1 carbine that I bought uh, in 97 which makes it 25 years. So I thought I'd bake a cake <laughs> and we would celebrate 25 years of owning and shooting this M1 carbine. Yeah, it's a long time to hang on to a firearm, uh, you know, really in the great scheme of things because we all are bad about trading them off or getting tired of something. And you know, how that goes, talk about, you know, a video on that, right? But this one uh, I bought in uh, Laverne, Tennessee. I was living here and uh, bought it at Specialty Arms. Specialty Arms 2, I think it's always been named. Uh, John Arnold's Gun Shop down there. It used to be, back in the day, man, it was one of the very few large gun shops around. But anyway, I went there and that was hanging on the wall. I remember right where it was hanging and uh, looked at it and walked out with it. Paid for it, of course, but that was in 97. And uh, so I was I have always been pleased to have a real M1 carbine whatever real means, right? Uh, well, as opposed to a, a reproduction, or that sort of thing, newer one. Um, and this one, by the way, as I talked about, I think in a video with this earlier video, I mean, I'll link to that too. Uh, it has a, uh, I think a Saginaw receiver, has an Underwood barrel, has a Winchester wood stock, okay? Yeah, I'm not sure about all the other specific parts, but that was the story with these firearms. I read, and when I was actually studying and researching for the Inland video, I read, uh, ran across, uh, I guess, in, is it Canfield? I read in his book, I ran across how, uh, like he stated, or somebody that, that the uh, uh, Saginaw uh, receivers were very common in the standard products firearm. In fact, I think he gave a serial number range. I think I talked about it in that video, and I went to that and looked it up and said, yeah, this is the way this one was shipped. So the fact that it has a Saginaw receiver, an underwood barrel, and, and that in Winchester wood, it doesn't mean that some guys were cleaning them years later or it was refurbed and they just grabbed a bunch of parts since they're interchangeable and just uh, put them mismatched, you know, that sort of thing. You'd get some of that. And then people restoring them, maybe they break the stock or they put a new barrel, rebarrel it or whatever it might be. So you end up with different parts sometimes. But uh, this is likely the way this firearm was shipped. That's the thing, because uh, you know everybody was making parts, and that was a cool thing about that. I won't rehash all that, but when they were geared up to make all those in the early 40s, like one company that was making them was better at making barrels, and they'd get ahead on barrels, and so they'd send barrels over to maybe Standard Products or to Inland or or to uh, you know one of the other makers, and then vice versa. So you had IBM and whoever, and so it was very interesting uh, to read about that. Can I shoot it? Okay. All right. I uh, want to uh, thank the people that help us. We've got a loaded mag in it, and uh, we will rack one of those in and fire it to help us out. All right. This is a cool old firearm. I don't shoot it enough. Maybe I shouldn't shoot it too much, you know. Now, the, uh, the bayonet lug, as I understand, those were put on after World War II. And they brought them back to kind of refurb them if they needed, and they, they installed those. And... Uh, and I, I uh, also have my own installation, a little extension on that thing. Give me a little more length. Did I put one in? Not yet. All right. Let's shoot the gong. Celebrate. 25 years. Let's knock the safety off. Oh, yeah. Cool. Little 35 caliber bullet. How about a red two liter or a red uh, target over there? It's pretty hard. Not that one in the middle. 
Now how about that uh, circle down there? Pretty nifty little gun. How about this pumpkin? Right here looking at me in the face. Boom! See, we already, we already did pumpkin carving. Well, let's do it again. <laughs> oh, we had a malfunction. Can you believe that? Let's rake it back and try again. Let's get around in the chamber. We had another one. You know, and that's uh, what you run into with these old guns, the old magazines more than anything. Yep, the old mags. That was the weakest link in these firearms. Now, with a modern firearm that I was uh, having around for a defensive firearm, that would really bother me. I'm going to put that one over there anyway. Uh, nah, it's a little annoying when you get it with one of these, but that's okay. It's done its duty. If it wants to malfunction, okay. <laughs> Now we got another pumpkin. Then you know what? It just so happens as we're filming this, today is Halloween. It's October 31st, all right? I don't know when you're seeing this. Yeah, you really wouldn't want me to know when you're seeing this, would you? That'd be kind of creepy if I knew whenever you're watching our videos what day it was. But anyway, it is Halloween. So, don't we do a scary pumpkin. How about, uh, da, 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 da. how about two liter? Yeah. How about miss one? How about this target over here? Since it's an anniversary, 25 years. Yeah, so romantic, 25 year. <laughs> Hold a pin. How about a gong again? No, it was done. I knew it was about empty. I was empty, not just about. Yeah, it's so romantic when you have a 25th anniversary, isn't it? <laughs> oh, that is a, that is a cool-looking firearm. i got to keep that magazine separated. But, uh, uh, you know, for the most part, as much as uh, you read about the magazines being a problem, I, I'll usually have maybe one here and there that I have some issues with, but most of them work okay. Of course, I don't shoot them all the time or that often. Uh, the the larger capacity mags that I understand can be worse than the others, but but that was one of the weak points. Someone I think told me that, or I read that you really uh, the mags were not designed to be like long term mags. I think you throw them away and get another one. That's kind of where they designed them. Uh, I'm not sure. It'd be nice if somebody made some better mags though. Let's you know what? Let's see how it shoots when it's in full dress. You want to? We're empty, and a uh, little carvings are so neat the way they work. Push that little button, hold it back. I know I hate that ugly uh, thing, but I need it. Oh man, these are small. They really have a short length of pull, so we know we're empty. The bolts back. Let's put this bayonet on here. Oops, and do a little deer hunting if we wanted to. Right? We could do anything with this. All right, she's clicked on. Pretty cool, it says 1943 on the barrel. It's underwood. Okay, I guess we ought to put some ammo in it. We're gonna shoot it. That one's not full, I don't think. All right, see, I'm just all giddy because it's an anniversary. Don't know what I'm doing. Don't know what I'm doing. Do I ever know what I'm doing? Okay, now we're ready. You could take this into the deer woods. You got your field dressing implement right there on it. Pretty cool, huh? Now let's pop that uh, round one. Good little shooters. Yeah. <laughs> What's that bowling pin doing? Look at me in the face right here. And that one. And that one. Oh, that too late. And this two liter, click, ran out. Uh -oh. Maybe he deserves to live, or maybe he doesn't. Maybe he doesn't. <laughs> All right, we got him. 
we were empty. That's why I, I charged. That's what, that was the reason for the bayonet charge, right? So we got some juice there, but oh look, it was getting hot. It was steaming a little bit. So we warmed up the bayonet, or maybe that was the barrel. Juice got on the barrel. Uh, so I should be uh, whipped, huh? Mistreating this fine old uh, military firearm. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, I should have been stabbing a pumpkin, not that two liter. But I couldn't resist. You know, when you run out of ammo, you got to do what you got to do. I bet I have something I could, yeah, yeah, wipe that baby down. So these these things are neat, and uh, you know, piece of history. Many of you watching this can appreciate the history for certain, uh, and there really is nothing ugly about it. Uh, even though the stock is beat up, really beat up. Uh, you don't look at it that way. Now, if it was a brand new Seiko hunting rifle you bought to go hunting, yeah, it'd be a different story, right? But with one of these, uh, that essentially just adds to the, the mystique of it and the, the, uh, I don't know, the attraction to, to some extent. It was actually used. You know, this, this thing didn't sit in a warehouse. At least that stock didn't, right? And then when they, they I think it was post-World War II, is when you end up with the bayonet lugs. I forget now what I know about them, but I believe it was after World War II, and then also the, the new rear sight, which was kind of a refurb and improvement, just like the uh, R3, A3, or whatever, Springfield, where you've got the sight moved back here. You can really get a better sight, like an AR, you know, you got a peep sight, ghost ring sight, always helps you. And uh, so this one actually is a better shooter than my inland in a way. You got the sights and then of course you got the all important bayonet lug because you never know when you're gonna need that when you run out of ammo and there's a two liter left. But uh, but th this this one I guess uh, wins the competition uh, between the, it and the inland I have in terms of uh, just, <laughs> I don't know, use. You know, wow, look at that thing. Really, really cool. I'll shoot it one more time. So I just, I just wanted to bring you out while I was celebrating. And uh, you know, some of you get mad if I don't bring you out when we're doing this kind of thing. If it's just John and and, uh, and I celebrating a 25 year anniversary on a firearm, you know, it's just not quite the same. We'd rather have yours. I'm gonna try. You now these are soft point, and it's a what a 25 round mag, whatever. Sometimes these especially will cause problems, but we'll try it anyway. Like I say, this is not my go-to uh, defensive firearm, so I won't lose any sleep over it if we have malfunctions, but I, it's still a little annoying, isn't it? All right, you know what? I'm gonna mess up Mr. Pumpkin face. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a turkey, a good turkey hunting firearm for sure. Nice. How about the burn barrel? I don't know how many rounds I have left, but I'm going to shoot them. <laughs> there you go. No celebration is complete without ample lid being slung at the gong, right? Yeah, and see, the bayonet doesn't really seem to affect accuracy either. So that's something you want to keep in mind if you uh, plan to buy one of these, uh, you know, do some deer hunting. I mean, you can fire it. You can uh, have the bayonet right there and ready. It's just it's pretty cool. So again, Underwood Barrel, Winchester Stock, and uh, Saginaw Receiver, but it's a standard product uh, firearm. And that's, that's just the story on these things. That's the story. That's the way they were, they were, <laughs> they were made. You know, they shared pieces and put them together, and uh, and uh, you know, it's, it's just an incredible effort. That uh, it's, it's it's really good reading. It really is. Uh, if you're into firearms and military firearms, you probably already know a lot about it. Maybe more than I do. 
but uh, it, it's it's worthy of some of your attention if you uh, find that kind of thing interesting. So anyway, uh, uh, but I'm, I'm just glad to still be around and for it to still be around and for both of us to be around together 25 years later. Pretty cool, huh? Glad you came out to help me celebrate. Life is good. Oh yeah, that's better. This is a great gun for defense. Oh hey, didn't see you guys there. Uh, while I've got you here, I want to remind you of our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. Talon Grips makes uh, grips, can you believe it, uh, for all different types of firearms. You can get rough texture or more of a rubberized texture. Uh, just sticks right on there. You know, really affordable, really cool option to in, improve the grip for your handguns um, or, or rifles. Uh, so please check them out at TalonGunGrips.com. You'll be glad you did. And also Ballastall. Uh, Dad has been using Ballastall for many years. It's a cleaner and a lubricant, and it's non-toxic. Uh, it works really great, and we're happy to have them on board since it's been a part of our shooting endeavor for a very long time. So go to ballastall.com, talongungrips.com, and also while you're out there, I'm juggling all these things here, also uh, while you're on the internet, please do check out our other social media like Hickok45 on Facebook. There's also Hickok45 on Twitter, the real Hickok45 on Instagram. There's a John underscore Hickok45 on Instagram where I do some things. There's Hickok45.com. Uh, you can find us also on GunStreamer. So check out all that stuff and then watch more videos.